I woke up in the middle of the night to heavy, heavy rain. Just a full-on downpour had started, and it woke me up. My immediate thought was, I better check my office, because the last time we had somewhat heavy rains, I had a bit of a leak, and it created a little bit of a puddle, and I didn't want that to happen near my computer. So hopped out of bed, walked downstairs, then came down the half flight of stairs into my office, and as I stepped down with my bare foot onto my office floor, I splashed into two and a half inches of water. Now, I had just spent the evening before setting up a new set for YouTube videos, this set. And it has a lot of accent lights and a lot of placement. It took a while. I've been setting this all up. A new set when I'm not doing screen shares or anything on the computer and just wanted to have conversations with you guys. And I thought it'd be nice to just have more of an office set up with a reading corner and a place where we can just have chats, like we're just sitting down and talking. So I created this new set with the other half of my office away from my desk. Spent the whole day setting this up, placing lights, getting it just right. Went to bed, I wake up to a downpour, I come down, I splash into inches of water in my office with all this new equipment set up. And I know that there are lights on the floor plugged into the wall. And I see across the room a power strip with lots of various lights and equipment plugged into it. And from that, a big, thick power cord plugged into the wall. This thing is mostly underwater. And I'm standing in inches of water with power plugs from the wall coming into non-sealed, multiple open vents on power strips in the water I'm standing in. I couldn't believe I hadn't been zapped already. So I walked into the garage, put on my rubber rain boots, came back in to my soaking wet, inches deep office, drenched, submerged even. Immediately started unplugging everything. Everything plugged into the wall, out. I had to stop the electrical flow into the pool that my office had become. So immediately unplugged everything. Spent hours then picking up equipment, moving it out to higher ground, clearing anything I could, trying to prevent damage. Because there's a lot of equipment in here. Multiple computers, some of which on the floor. Endless camera and lighting gear. It was a major, major problem. So I cleared everything out. Just took a while, but lifted, moved out. And then, like, what do I do? It's like, I don't even know where it's coming in. So I tried to seal the place that it leaked last time, but there's really not much I can do because I had done that last time. I sealed it as much as I could. So I tried to just tape around it. I mopped up, I dumped buckets, I mopped and dumped buckets, just everything I could to try to get that level down. The rains did thankfully ease up. I got a lot of the heavy, heavy water, the deepest water out by mopping, rinsing, dumping, and doing that for hours got it to a reasonably manageable state. I mean, still swamped, but not submerged. And cleaned that up, got a little bit of sleep. The next day, it looked like it had gone down. The water had actually rescinded more. I thought we were okay. The rains kept coming. We had a three-day massive rainstorm here in Los Angeles. We had what was described as six months of rain in three days. This is unheard of in Los Angeles. But boom, it came down hard, and we just were not ready for it. You wouldn't expect this. This was out of the blue. We just happened to be in the wrong convergence of flowing streams and some little cracks here and there. I didn't even know where it was coming from. Had a clue, sealed that. It didn't stop it. Kept coming in. The rains picked up again. It flooded again. I mopped it, wrung it out. Many bucket trips to dump the water. Cleaned, evacuated more equipment. Got it down again. It rained hard again. I went through this over and over for three days. Now, as you may know, I had just launched in my previous YouTube video, my return to YouTube. I was so excited to come back to YouTube, committed to regular videos, regular sharing of ideas, re-engaging in the conversation, all that stuff I talked about last time. I have these new missions. I have all this stuff I'm on fire about. That's why I built an additional area in my office for a different type of video. I'm getting ready, I'm gearing up. And I'm due for my next video. I had just had my first return video, and now it's time for the second one. 
I got to get the momentum going. I got to get it happening. And I'm fired up about it and then stuck, swamped, shut down. Oh, you guys, I was so eager. I've got a whole series mapped out. I'm ready to go with. And I outlined, mapped out, and built up to do the next video, to start the series that I want to get into exploring ideas with you guys. And then this happened, shut me down. And so here I am with my return to YouTube video and then nothing because I get shut down right when I need to record and post the next video. Immensely frustrating. But it did remind me of a fundamental aspect of life that we all need reminding of. And we're going to get reminded of whether it sparks the memory or not. The impulse to revisit this concept will come over and over again. And this was, as awful as it was, a beautiful example to bring me back to that, which is that the number one characteristic for success in life is resilience. You will be knocked down. You will be hit with unexpected adversity constantly. That is the nature of life. The number one characteristic for succeeding in life is resilience, which is the persistence, the perseverance, the drive to overcome whatever adversity comes at you and just make steady progress no matter what. Now, I got knocked back quite a few steps. I was ready to go. I was hitting my stride and I got knocked way back here. So that doesn't mean I jump ahead and take the next step. I can't. I'm now I'm way back here. But I did take the next step from back here, from the new location I was knocked into. I just took the next step. The next step was to start cleaning. The next step was to get the gear out, save what I could, make sure there was as little damage as possible. The next step is what matters from where you are, not from where you expected to be, not from where you wanted to be, but from wherever you are at any given point. The next step is what matters. And taking the next step from wherever you are is resilience. It's the persistence, the perseverance, the determination, the instinct to just take the next step no matter where you are. No matter how frustrated, no matter how down you are, you can take a breath, take a pause, regain your composure or your steady breathing. Breath work is something I talked about in the last video that is my recentering practice, that meditation. Take a pause, reset, but then take the next step. No matter how small, take the next step. I heard this great concept of the key to doing anything, no matter how big, no matter where you're starting, is the ABZ concept. A is where you are, Z is where you want to go, and B is the next step. All you need to know is A, B, and Z. You'll figure out the rest in between. So you know you're at A, you know the next step, which is B, and you have a general sense of where Z is, that's the direction, A, B, Z. Take the first step, and then when you're at B, once you finish the next step, then the next step is B, and you're at A. You have a new A, B becomes A. After you do it, that's where you are. Take the next step to point B on your way to Z, and whatever is in between there, you will figure out. Just take the next step. And the reason for this is that the most important element to being happy, to being satisfied with life is the sense of progress. Progress is the fundamental sensation that is going to make you happy, satisfied, okay with where you are. If you feel you're making progress, you'll feel okay. It's when you feel stuck, lost. That's when things feel overwhelming. That's when that sense of doom can set in. That's when the anxiety builds up. That's when the overwhelm hits. But if you feel you're making progress, that is the foundation of happiness and contentment. Even achieving the thing is less important than the feeling of making progress because the satisfaction from that will be short-lived. It's the hedonic treadmill. Whenever you get the thing, there's a momentary happiness and it fades and the next thing replaces the desire that you had for the first thing and you just want the next thing. So you don't feel satisfaction and happiness very long from achieving the thing. You feel happiness and satisfaction and contentment with life when you feel like you're progressing, when you feel like you're on a steady trajectory, 
forward. And in order to feel like you're on a steady trajectory forward, you have to have a sense of what you want to be moving toward. So you have to have a sense of this state of Z, this destination. And that's why in the pillars, pipelines, and vaults, we emphasize identifying what you value in life, identifying what's meaningful to you, and then setting your life aspirations, breaking them into goals so you have a clear compass. You can change them at any time. They are not in stone. They are flexible. They are there for you to choose. And as you change, they can change. But they are the destination. They are the compass that you are moving toward and that the sense of progress you feel is progress toward these preset, clearly designed, intentional destinations that again can change at any time, but the sense of moving toward them is that progress that gives you satisfaction. It gives you a sense of we're moving towards something that we care about, something that matters, and we're moving in a direction that means something, and we are making progress. And that progress is being in the state of taking the next step, feeling movement toward and with the next step. So that's why it's so essential, no matter where you are, no matter where you're going, to always be in the active state of taking the next step, not letting it go, not panicking, not just feeling so overwhelmed and crushed that you're paralyzed. Paralysis is that sense of doom. It's that sense of dread. Not knowing what to do can be that too. That's why we think about breaking down the bigger goals, the bigger objectives into steps. And if you don't know what the next step is, you can't make the progress. That's why we break things down into smaller pieces and we take steps as we go. But no matter what, wherever you are, you need to identify a next step, no matter how small. It can be infinitesimal. But if it's a step forward in the direction that you care about, it is progress. And that sense of progress will change everything. It will lift your mood. It will reduce the anxiety because you are moving. That state of movement is what we need to establish and maintain. So no matter how far back you get knocked, no matter how far the hit I took with my office flooding and nearly being electrocuted, I knew I needed to start taking steps immediately. And so I sprung into action. And the steps were just cleaning, were minimizing the damage, starting to bring the water down, get everything out. That was the first step. And in the days that followed... I rebuilt. And that rebuilding was step by step by step. And then I worked with my landlord to bring out people to start sealing better. And we found eventually where it was actually coming in. And then we had more action we could take. So the first step with dealing with the bigger issue of the flooding is identifying where it was coming in. And we kept identifying incorrect places. And so we'd seal them and then it would still flood. Eventually we found the right one. It's actually a difficult one to seal but we're bringing people in. We're making it happen. We're step by step by step solving that crisis. And I'm step by step by step getting the YouTube production back online because that is the mission. I had a clear mission, a clear objective, and I am going after it step by step by step. No matter how many steps it takes, I'm going to get there. I'm going to get back to where I was, and then I'm going to keep moving forward. And it's going to happen one step at a time. And I'm totally good with that because I feel great that we're moving in the right direction. But I reiterate, you have to know what progress looks like, which is not difficult. You need to know your destination, point Z. You need to know where you are, which is usually not that difficult. And you need to break it down into pieces and look at what is the first thing I can take that moves me towards that objective. Now, fundamentally, resilience itself is a system. It doesn't seem like a system, but everything around us is systems. The act of persisting through adversity has systemic components to it. So we have an inciting incident, which is similar to the inciting incident in films or in narrative stories. There's an incident that sparks the adversity. It's either a discovery or something happens that sparks this adversity that you weren't expecting or you weren't prepared for. Something happens. Adversity comes in. And then that is met with two things, internal resources and external resources. The internal resources is who you are. It's your mindset, your framework on the world, your optimism or your pessimism. It's your strength. It's your physical conditioning as well as your mental conditioning. It's who you are and how you deal with adversity. 
It's your growth versus fixed mindset. It's just sort of the state of you at that moment. External resources would be your community, your support network, your access to items and products and tools that would be helpful in that situation. And the combination of your internal and external resources flow up and meet this inciting incident, this onset of adversity, and you go into an ongoing state of adversity where all of your resources are combined, allocated, and applied toward addressing the adversity. And so you go through this period. And during this time, you can build your internal and external resources, or your internal and external resources can be depleted or reduced as they, you burn through them. You may burn through your personal endurance, your personal willpower to overcome, or it could be built up. You could become more determined and stronger in the face of the adversity. You want to be aware of this because this is a system that's happening as it plays out. And obviously, you want to be enforcing and building and enhancing your internal properties, the ones that you can actually build in the amount of time you have. may not be time to build physical strength, but you can build mental strength. You can build frameworks that serve you to address the adversity. You can improve them in the act of taking on that adversity. At the same time, you can be enhancing your external resources. You can be reaching out. You can be calling for help. You can be tapping into your network. You can be calling people from Google searches and asking your hardware store or in the case of my flooding situation or any directory for service providers that help with this kind of thing. You want to build up your external resources by reaching out and finding the people and the tools that you need to address this. This is applicable, of course, to my flood example, but it's also applicable to absolutely anything in life. As you are going through the adversity, you want to make sure, especially your psychological and your internal resources, they're not being burned down. You want to enhance them as you go, build determination, build structure. This can be done through a lot of things we've talked about in the past, a lot of things we've built into the PPV system, but you want to be very cognizant of the danger of it being depleted and the possibility, the capability you have to build it up, even while it's being administered and applied toward addressing the adversity. And of course, you want to take action to build those external resources, tap into anything you can to build strength and build access to the tools and resources to take on the adversity. So you go through this period after the inciting incident of the confrontation and eventual overcoming of this challenge. And then you get to the state of outcomes. Outcomes are a fundamental part of all systems. The outcomes are how it plays out after you go through this process and you play out this time period of the adversity. And then at the end, you have a new set, a new state of internal and external resources. This entire thing is a feedback loop. This is building or tearing down your internal resources. It's also building or tearing down your external resources. You want to make sure you're building them up. That creates positive feedback loops. And that means the next time some sort of adversity, some sort of unexpected incident comes up, you are better able to handle it, both with your internal resources and with your external resources. And you do that over and over through life because adversity will not ever stop. That is the nature of life. And if we're building with each adversity we take on and overcome, if we build strength with our internal resources, our frameworks, our ability to take pause and rebuild our endurance in the midst of the adversity, we become stronger and more capable of taking on bigger challenges. Similarly, if we're constantly in the face of adversity or in the quiet between adversity, building up our external resources, our networks, our communities, our tools, our devices, whatever external resources will help us take on adversities in the future, we want to build those up too. And we learn from our past adversities which ones are worth investing in. Because ultimately, this is an investment in ourselves and in our tools and resources and network and community around us. And if you think about it in this framework, you can consistently come out of the back end better off than you went in. My studio is now better than it was before. I trashed my old carpet, got a better carpet that looks so much nicer. I'm actually happier in this space because of the better carpet, to take a very trivial example. But I've also built systems. I'm ready for flooding. I'm sealing it to ensure that that won't happen again. But if it did, I'd be more and better capable of addressing it faster if something 
anywhere remotely related to that were to happen again, any kind of physical impact on my space, I am more resilient to it than I ever was before. And my ability to cope with it is ready because I know I overcame that and as immensely tiring and aggravating and frustrating as it was because I was ready to go with the next YouTube video and I wanted to show that I'm here and I wanted to share these ideas that I'm on fire about, but I got knocked back. It couldn't happen last week. I'm doing it now. I got a new video here based on this experience that was not in my plan. And this is a video that I'm actually really excited to share. This is a video I'm happy to be making. I think the series of videos to follow will be better because this one happened and this video never would have happened if I hadn't had that flooding situation and that whole thing I went through that reminded me that resilience is the most essential characteristic to succeed in life. And it reminded me of the feedback loop of facing adversity, overcoming it, and coming out the back end stronger, better than you were in the beginning. And that this kind of thing is the kind of thing that just happens over and over in life. And it can build you up or it can tear you down. But if you frame it in the sense of systems that are either building momentum and resources for the next iteration or detracting and deteriorating iteration after iteration, if you frame it that way and understand that that is the fundamental nature of how it works and how every story or segment of life works, you will be so much better off because you will understand what you need to do in that circumstance and you will know what the step B is to move from your current state of A to B in your general movement toward that desired state of state Z. So here's a quick diagram that shows the process flow or the framework of resilience as a system, as a life system that repeats itself over and over again. And you go through this phase of building the internal and external characteristics you need to be better and more capable as you go through different stages of life, as you go through event after event after event in life. Because life is a series of stories. Life is a series of events. It's a series of problems and challenges you have to overcome over and over again. And how you deal with each one will have an impact on how you deal with the subsequent ones. So you're either getting better at it or you're getting worse at it. In most cases, we get better at it. But the more deliberate we are in how we address it, the faster and more powerfully we become better at it. So it's better to become better quicker, to be stronger faster and able to stand and to thrive earlier in life, sooner than the potential bigger crises or challenges that will come down the road. So we're building ourselves up. Think of it like going to the gym. Dealing with each instance of adversity is a visit to the gym, building reps, building muscles, building capabilities to take it on, and most fundamentally, building the resilience. Resilience is the mental determination, the mental strength, the mental fortitude to take on anything and to overcome it and to come out of it better than you went into it. But remember, resilience is the characteristic that makes us successful in life. And two, progress is the fundamental element of contentment, happiness, of being satisfied with life, satisfied with where we are and what's happening in our lives. The focus and the objective is not the end result. It's a steady state of progress. That's where you're going to feel okay. That's where things are going to be all right. If you just feel steady progress, and steady progress is not complicated. It's just a matter of actively, always, perpetually being in the process of taking the next step, the one single next step, always. Each day, each week, you just take the next step. That is progress. That is the key to being content and happy with the state of your life. So I wanted to share this because this is what I've been thinking of. This is how I framed it myself in the most frustrating moments, in the moments when I was just like, oh, I had this, things were going, I had momentum, I was ready to charge, and then I just got blasted far further back than even when I started the first video on my return to YouTube. It was far back beyond that, and I had to even get up to that point and then get beyond that point, but you know what, I'm better off now and I'm more excited now, and I feel stronger and more capable and more ready to do the series that I've been planning for many, many months now. So we're on track. I'm here. I'm super excited to share and explore ideas with you. Lots more to come after this. If this is of interest, if you want to go on this journey of exploring how we can build 
better lives, how we can build systems to put us on the tracks, to build that iterating feedback loop of strength and resilience. Hit subscribe, hit the notification button, join the newsletter, and let's do this.